For reasons related to the currently ongoing third and final season of Star Trek Picard, a lot of Trekkies have been talking about the episode Conspiracy from way back in the first season of Star Trek The Next Generation. I won't get into too much detail about what those reasons are, because A, I know not everyone watching this video when it's released will have seen Picard Season 3, and B, at the time of this video, I've only seen up to Episode 5 of Season 3, so I don't know where it's going, or to what degree any comparisons to Conspiracy will be applicable. But I do have a few thoughts about that episode and how it relates to Star Trek Picard in a more general way, and actually how it relates to a lot of present-day TV, particularly streaming series. Before I go any farther, I do want to warn you, in case you haven't seen Picard Season 3 yet, that I might mention some general spoilers in this video. Comparisons between Conspiracy and Picard Season 3 will not be the main subject here, but that doesn't mean I will completely avoid referring to similarities between the two, particularly if those similarities are relevant to a point I'm making or allow me the opportunity to take a cheap shot at the writing of Picard. Okay, so let's talk about Conspiracy, which originally aired near the end of TNG's first season. The Enterprise is on its way to the planet Pacifica for a scientific mission when Picard receives a late-night message from his old friend Captain Walker Keel, sent on a highly secure emergency frequency. Keel's like, so, hey, there's something wrong with Starfleet, and it's bad, and I can't discuss it over the phone, so can you meet me on Ditalics B? Picard says, sorry, that's impossible. Keel's like, but I really want you to. And Picard says, oh, in that case, okay, I'll see you on Ditalix B. Awesome. And hey, Jean-Luc, don't trust anybody. What about you? All right, I'll see you on... Wait, what? Should I trust you? Yes. Because you said not to trust anybody. Right, but you can trust me because I'm the one telling you not to trust anybody. If you can't trust me, then you can't trust that you can't trust anybody. Ergo, you have to trust me in order to know that you can't trust anybody, which you do know because I just told you. The reasoning is airtight. The Enterprise warps to Ditalics B. Three other Federation ships are there, and there are three people waiting on the planet's surface. So, Picard beams down to join them and finds Captain Keel along with Captain Trila Scott and Captain Ricks. And each one of them is packing a rod. Picard's like, whoa, I thought this planet was warm enough. What's with the heaters? While the other two hold their phasers on Picard, Keel starts giving him the third degree. He's like, where did we first meet? At a titty club on Tal City 3. What's your middle name? Gerardo. Which one of my sisters did you sleep with? Trick question. I slept with your mother. How old were you when your mother committed suicide? My mother didn't commit su- Oh, wait, yeah, she did! I keep forgetting! <laughs> anyway, what's with the security questions? Almost done. I'm going to show you a series of photos, and I want you to tell me which ones have bicycles. Will you just knock it off and tell me what's going on? Keel, Scott, and Ricks explain that they had to verify that Picard is who he appears to be because something super weird has been going on with Starfleet Command lately. High-ranking officials have been issuing strange orders and supporting irrational proposals. Picard's like, okay, still waiting to hear about the weird stuff. There's been a series of accidents resulting in the deaths of several high-ranking officers. An entire starbase was evacuated with no explanation, and old friends suddenly seem to be bluffing their way through conversations. Keel's like, I talked to Admiral Carteris last week. He totally whiffed on the which one of my sisters did you sleep with question. And he married my sister Melissa and cheated on her with my sister Anne. The bottom line, according to Keel, Scott, and Ricks, is this. Starfleet is being infiltrated by someone or something somehow. Members of Top Brass have been compromised, and whatever is going on, it ain't good, so Picard should watch out, because it's only a matter of time before this threat, whatever it is, decides to target the Enterprise. Keel urges Picard to watch his back. Picard's like, okay, whatever, Agent Mulder. What are you going to tell me next? There are aliens on my ship? Beam me up, Mr. Worf. 
Despite his skepticism, Picard has Data conduct a thorough review of recent Starfleet activity to look for the sorts of unusual patterns Keel and the others warned about. While Data is carrying out his research, Worf detects an explosion nearby. It turns out to be the USS Horatio, the starship commanded by Captain Keel. Picard's like, all right, fine, maybe he was onto something. Data's review confirms that Starfleet Command has been acting kind of screwy lately. Well, screwy in a way that is suspiciously different from the screwy way it typically behaves, I'm assuming. Data, Riker, and Picard worry that if Starfleet Command has been compromised, these unusual activities could be the prelude to a full-on invasion. So, Picard orders the Enterprise to Earth so they can drop in on Starfleet headquarters and see what's going on right up close. The Enterprise reaches Earth, Picard hails Starfleet, and these three admirals answer the phone. Admiral Savar, Admiral Aaron, and Admiral Quinn. We've met Quinn before. He appears in Coming of Age, which premiered a couple of months before this one. In that episode, Quinn orders Commander Remick of the Inspector General's office to conduct an investigation of the Enterprise crew to verify that no one aboard has been compromised by a mysterious enemy that Quinn believes is working in secret to destroy the Federation. He tells Picard this, and Picard pledges his full support to Quinn. I guess Picard just forgot about that between then and his meeting with Keel and the others on Ditalics B. I mean, the last time he saw Quinn was all the way back in March, and here it is May. The three admirals are like, hey, what's up? What are you doing here? Picard says he'd prefer to discuss it in person, so the admirals invite him and Riker down for dinner. Except Admiral Quinn says he won't be able to make it, so he asks if he can come up to the Enterprise for a visit. Picard says, sure. And after Quinn beams aboard, Picard says, Hey, you remember what you told me a couple months ago about how you thought an invisible enemy was threatening to destroy the Federation? Did anything ever happen with that? Quinn's like, Oh, that, that was nothing. Forget I ever said anything. Now, you'd better get down to dinner with the other admirals. I'm just gonna wander unattended around your ship for a few hours, if that's okay with you. Picard's like, sounds great, buddy. Quinn wanders off by himself, and Picard pulls Riker aside and says, okay, so here's the thing. That's not Admiral Quinn. I need to go have dinner with these other admirals, so you keep an eye on him while he's here. And have Dr. Crusher give him a medical exam. But he's an admiral. How am I going to get him to submit to a medical exam without him getting suspicious? I don't know. Make up an excuse. Say it's something to do with his prostate or his colon, old man shit. Oh, I know. Tell him we finally discovered a treatment for erectile dysfunction that won't make it fall off after 25 years. We did? That's fantastic news. Ugh, just get the old bastard into sickbay somehow. I gotta go. Picard beams down to Starfleet headquarters. Riker drops in on Admiral Quinn in the Admiral's guest quarters, where Quinn is like, Hey, kid, you want to see something cool? Come check out what I've got in this box. Riker's like, okay, just as long as I don't have to put my hand in it, because I'm not falling for that one again. Quinn says, you'll put your hand in it if I tell you to, and grabs a hold of Riker and proceeds to just absolutely kick the dog shit out of him. Riker manages to call security and gets in a few kicks of his own, but Quinn just shrugs him off and backhands him, sending him crashing through a glass coffee table. I'm telling you, Quinn beats Riker like his name was Worf. Speaking of whom, Worf shows up with Geordi in tow because I guess all the security officers were busy? Must have been Ensign Johnson's shift. And Quinn proceeds to knock the hell out of both of them, too. Finally, Dr. Crusher shows up with a phaser and manages to put Quinn down long enough to take him to sickbay. Well, that takes care of that. No need to concoct a subterfuge to get the Admiral to submit to a medical exam. Isn't that good news, Will? Will? They take Quinn to sickbay, and Crusher's like, okay, I'm gonna have to employ all my skills and every bit of advanced technology available to me to figure out what happened to Admiral Quinn. I'll start with a retinal scan, and then move on to a full-body internal diagnostic, and if that doesn't do it, I'll perform a deep molecular FUCK WHAT'S THAT THING ON HIS NECK! Picard is just about to sit down for dinner with the Admirals, and he calls the Enterprise to see if Riker's going to be joining him, but since Riker is still selling that glass coffee table bump, 
Crusher picks up and says, hey, Admiral Quinn has been taken over by some kind of intelligent parasite that gives him the strength of 10 humans or one Vulcan. He bounced Riker around his quarters like a Super Bowl. If the other admirals have been taken over, you can tell by the little squiggly tails sticking out of the back of their neck. Once you see that, you might as well set your phaser to kill and start blasting, because stun settings have no effect, and I can't remove these creatures without killing the patient. Yes! Finally an excuse for some guilt-free murders! Tell Riker to get down here as soon as he recovers from that old man beating him like a student in Catholic school, and tell him to bring a phaser, we're hunting space spiders! Actually, they're more like earwigs. Picard out! Picard sits down at the dinner table, and it looks like Ferengi cuisine is on the menu tonight. Starting with a nice bowl of grubs. Num num num! I wonder if they had it delivered through... DoorDash? Picard's like, <laughs> the thing is, I had grubs for lunch, and I've still got leftovers in the fridge, so... Just then, Riker shows up. Picard is happy to see him at first, but then Riker puts the arm on him and says, you're not going anywhere. Soon you'll be one of us. Just like me, who is now one of them. Us. Us. I include myself in the group, of which I am definitely a part. Admiral Aaron is like, hey, you were meant for Dr. Crusher. Riker shrugs, says, yeah, well, I got Riker. What do you want from me? Aaron checks the back of Riker's neck, and sure enough, there's the little tail sticking out. No way you can fake that. Captain Scott enters to join the group for dinner. Turns out she's been taken over too. Picard asks the parasites what their deal is, who they are, where they come from, what their intentions are. Admiral Savar says, all you need to know is that we traveled a long way to get here. This project is something we've been working on for a long time, and we've covered our tracks so well that no one will even suspect what's happening until it's already too late. Except for the people who started suspecting something was up months ago. Shut up! Savar says, let's eat! And Riker gets ready to tuck into some yummy grubs when suddenly he jerks his phaser and starts shooting like, ha ha! It was all a ruse! I was not one of you! William Riker will never eat worms! Picard grabs Captain Scott's phaser and Riker shoots her. After she hits the ground, her earwig crawls out and makes a break for it. Savar tries the Vulcan neck pinch on Riker, but Picard takes him out. Aaron runs out into the hall. Picard and Riker follow and shoot him in the back as he flees like the coward he is. Yeah! Aaron's purple earwig crawls out of his mouth and under a door. They follow the earwig into that room where they discover Commander Remick sitting in a rotating supervillain chair. The earwig crawls up Remick's arm and into his mouth. He's like, didn't see that one coming, did ya? I'm the big boss of this operation. Picard and Riker are like, Works for us, we didn't like you anyway. And they let him have it with both phasers. First, they blow his head off. Then, the master parasite puppet pops out like, Me, do me! So, they blow it up too. To seek out new life and immediately annihilate it. Think of it, Riker. Now we know the thrill our European ancestors must have felt. Back aboard the Enterprise, Picard records a captain's log where he wraps everything up nice and neat, explaining that once the mama parasite that was inside Remick was dead, all the little earwig parasites died. And hey, apparently Admiral Quinn is going to be fine now that his parasite is dead, because I guess it was possible to disable the hosts without killing them. Oh well! They'll never know how many members of Starfleet were compromised. But the infiltration threat is over, so there's no reason why this ever needs to be mentioned by anyone ever again, right? Right. Great. So let's... Oh shit, Data wants to say something. Yeah, Data. And Data's like, Remick was sending a signal when you guys walked in and blew him up. It was directed toward an unexplored region of the galaxy. It was a homing beacon. Sent to the other earwig parasites. And now that they know of our existence... They will be coming. No, wait. That's next season. So, Conspiracy is not a great episode, but it's not really a bad episode either. It's above average for season one of TNG, that's for sure. Most importantly, for our purposes here, it's an instructive episode in certain ways. And an episode with some qualities I appreciate. For example, it does this thing I really like where it gets to the point! Hero gets warned about Conspiracy. Hero confirms existence of conspiracy. Hero is directly threatened by conspiracy. Hero confronts and destroys conspiracy, all within a single show. 
Like I said, this isn't a great episode. At times it does feel like we're sprinting through a whole bunch of plot to fit everything in, but it's just nice to watch and be reminded that it's possible to tell a big, complex story in a single installment instead of dragging it out for, oh, I don't know, let me just pick a random number, 10 episodes. So, yeah, I appreciate the economy of the storytelling, even if the episode doesn't completely pull it off. Brevity is a virtue in storytelling. Brevity is the soul of wit, as Shakespeare tells us in Hamlet. Ironically, his longest play, but hey, nobody's perfect. And Conspiracy certainly isn't a perfect episode, but like I said, it's an instructive episode. And for me, at least, most instructive in its imperfections. The biggest problem with the episode is that it feels like there's too much plot and specifically too much plot that includes things happening that should be a really, really big deal within the world of the story to properly handle within a single hour of television. Might there have been a way to tell this story that would have given it more room to breathe while also preserving that sense of economy, of brevity, that I like about the episode? I think there might have. In fact, the writers of TNG Season 1 kind of did it. They just didn't quite go far enough with it. Remember I said during my clever and hilarious episode summary that we've seen Admiral Quinn and Commander Remick before. They appear in Coming of Age, which originally aired about two months earlier. That episode plants the seed for the events of Conspiracy. Commander Remick comes aboard the Enterprise to investigate the possibility that the crew has been compromised by an unknown enemy. The true motivation of Remick's investigation isn't revealed until near the end of the episode, when Admiral Quinn shares his concerns with Captain Picard. So, the idea of something strange going on in Starfleet, of some sort of infiltration happening, is introduced several episodes before Conspiracy. That's good. Or rather, it's a good start. Unfortunately, Star Trek The Next Generation wasn't nearly as willing to embrace multi-episode story arcs as some of its successor shows would be, particularly Star Trek Deep Space Nine. In fact, Deep Space Nine eventually told a similar story in its later seasons about Starfleet and other major galactic powers being infiltrated by shapeshifters, a story so admired by fans and Star Trek creators alike that the producers of season three of Star Trek Picard apparently decided to just do it again? That's great. I can't tell you how exciting it is that the big idea for the ultimate final for real this time we really mean it farewell to the heroes of TNG is apparently to redo a plot from Deep Space Nine. Brilliant. Star Trek is back. Anyway, the writers of TNG Season 1 had the right idea by introducing the concept of a secret invasion of Starfleet in an earlier episode before devoting an entire show to it. But that's such a big story with so many far-reaching implications that I think it would have helped for them to plant one or two more seeds across a slightly larger span of episodes. Here's my idea. Keep coming of age exactly the same. It's episode 19 of TNG's 26 episode first season. But several episodes before that, maybe about halfway through the season, say episode 13 or 14, have something happen that is related to the conspiracy plot. Now, the audience won't know that at the time. Its place in the larger story will only make sense in retrospect, but that's the point, to set something up that the audience doesn't realize is a setup until they get to the payoff. So, have a scene where Captain Picard has to contact the captain of some other ship for some reason to ask a question related to that episode's problem. And there's just something a little off about the conversation. It's an old friend, but they treat Picard coldly. Picard makes some reference to something that happened back in their academy days, but the other person doesn't seem to pick up on it. The sort of bluffing through a conversation that Captain Keel will describe happening to him when he meets with Picard on Ditalics B, in other words. Three episodes later, do the same thing in a different way. In episode 17, have Riker receive an order from a newly promoted admiral that doesn't make any sense, that would send the Enterprise off on a mission that there doesn't seem to be any purpose for. He relates the order to Picard, 
who contacts Starfleet Command for confirmation, and Starfleet Command tells Picard to disregard the order, that it was some kind of a mix-up, and gives Picard the order that sets the Enterprise on its mission for that episode instead. Again, puzzling, not the focus of the episode, but viewers who have seen the other episodes will start to get the point. Then, episode 19, Coming of Age, the first direct reference to something being up with Starfleet. After that, things proceed without further progression of that plot until we get to episode 24, which is the one right before Conspiracy. That episode is We'll Always Have Paris, the one where Picard runs into a lost love from his youth. I wouldn't want to change this episode too much, because I think it's pretty good, especially for season one. I just need to find enough space to make two tiny changes. First, near the end of the episode, maybe after Picard leaves sickbay following his last scene with Dr. Mannheim, have Picard get notified that he's received a coded message on an emergency frequency. He goes to his quarters, and we don't see what the message is, but we see him reading it and we get that it's important. Then. In the final scene of the episode, Picard returns to the bridge after saying goodbye to Janice, his ex, and Riker says, Course laid in for Serona 8, Captain. But Picard says, Actually, number one, we'll be making an unscheduled detour. I'm afraid we'll have to delay our shore leave on Serona 8. Helm, lay in a course for Ditalics B. Riker says, Is everything all right? Picard says, We'll soon find out. Then, Riker says, I hope we're not too long in getting to Serona 8. I've only been there once, but they've got this great club there, and the rest of the scene continues as in the original. And then, Conspiracy, the following episode, begins with the Enterprise arriving at Ditalix B and Picard delivering a voiceover through his captain's log to catch everyone up and set the scene. In response to an urgent summons from Captain Walker Keel, one of my oldest and most trusted friends, the Enterprise has made an unscheduled stop at Ditalix B, and the first scene is Picard beaming down to Ditalix and having that meeting with Keel and the other two captains. Doing it as I've described not only foreshadows the conspiracy and makes it feel like a bigger deal by planting seeds across a larger portion of the season, it also relieves the episode conspiracy of the burden of having to set most of this up. We know about the weird behavior of some Starfleet personnel. We know that Picard has been called to an unscheduled meeting. We've learned the circumstances of that meeting, old friend, urgent, very hush-hush, through the captain's log. So in the cold open, we can jump right in with the meeting on Ditalics. The cold open ends with Captain Ricks, or better yet, Captain Keel himself, saying, Watch your back, Picard. From there, things proceed more or less as they do in the rest of the original version of Conspiracy, only there's more time to explore the scenario and really let the gravity of this threat to the Federation sink in. Maybe the Enterprise can reach Earth earlier in the episode. And the scene between Picard and Quinn, where Picard realizes Quinn has been body snatched, can be a bit longer have a little back and forth between the two of them, generate some tension. I don't know. I don't have a full rewrite for a conspiracy ready to go, but I think you get the general idea. Brevity is the soul of wit, and if you ask me, economy is the secret to effective storytelling. That doesn't mean every story has to be cut to the bone, just one plot point after another. That's not a story, that's a summary of a story. You need to have time to establish mood, to explore and develop characters, to build tension and suspense, but there shouldn't be anything in your story that doesn't contribute meaningfully to the whole. And if you can tell a story in an hour and do it justice, you should tell it in an hour instead of taking two or three or more. If, as is the case with Conspiracy, your story needs to reach beyond a single episode in order to land the way it needs to, that doesn't mean you have to make it the main subject of multiple episodes. Set it up earlier and once or twice more often throughout the season so that when you get to the actual episode, it feels like a culmination of something that's been building for a while, rather than the narratively overburdened payoff to something that was briefly set up in one previous episode. Most importantly, preserve conspiracy as a tight, 
singular episode. In my version, it remains the only episode of the season exclusively devoted to the parasitic earwig secret invasion. There's an unfortunate tendency currently prevalent in television writing, especially series being produced for streaming services, to take stories that would be better off as single episodes and stretch them out to truly sadistic lengths. Star Trek Picard is by no means the only offender, though it is among the worst, particularly in its second season. There's nothing wrong with serialized storytelling. Many shows, including some Star Trek shows, have done it well. But if you don't have enough plot in your big season-long story to fill every episode of your season, don't try. Because it'll suck, and also because you don't have to. Set up your big story early, nudge it along here and there throughout the season, and don't make it the main event until the time you have left is the right amount of time to do it justice. Maybe that right amount of time is one episode. Maybe it's two. Might even be three or four. Who knows? It's probably not ten. With Conspiracy, it's definitely one. Sprinkle some setups in throughout the season to build it up, Make it the main plot of one episode, and by the end of that episode, the plot is resolved, more or less. We can keep Data's They Sent a Homing Beacon tease at the end, even though it never gets paid off, which is also something I wouldn't change. No need to pay that off, especially since they basically do the same thing with the Borg in Season 2, only they do pay that off. Data's Homing Beacon line does its job just fine, by ending the episode on a note of uncomfortable uncertainty, reminding us that it can be a dangerous universe out there. The lack of resolution, the tension, is the point. We don't need to see the purple earwigs ever again. The fact that it's left open-ended doesn't mean we have to revisit it at some point. We don't. You hear me? We don't. We do not.